This video is from the prerequisite chapter, P.7. It's all about complex numbers. So you remember in a previous video we were talking about the prison method? I know all of you know how to do the square root of 16. I know that you know that's 4. Well, just to review the prison method, remember you take the 16 and break it down into its prime factors. So we can do 4 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. And all of these little guys are in prison. Well, since this is a square root, we have to put them in pairs so they can escape the prison. And remember, only one in each of these pairs actually makes it out. So we have one of these twos, and one of these twos. And 2 times 2 is 4. So this is just another way you can get to this answer if you don't actually know what the square root of that number is. Let's take 32 for example. We have 32, we can break that down into 4 times 8. That's 2 times 2, 2 times 4. All these 2's are prime, but the 4 is not. This is a square root, so we put them in groups of 2. One of these makes it out, one of these makes it out, and this little guy has to stay inside. So the square root of 32 would have two twos on the outside and a two on the inside. So you would end up with four square roots of two. So what if you have a cube root? Break down your 27. We can say that's three times nine. Three times three times three. This is a cube root, so they have to escape in a group of three. Well, since there are three of them, we can put them all in one group and only one of them makes it out. So the cube root of 27 is just three, the one that makes it out. Okay, so how about the fourth root of 16? If you break down 16, we have four times four, we did that already, it's over here, didn't we? Yeah, let's just use this one. So we know it's going to be four twos. We have the fourth root of one, two, three, four twos. They're all multiplied, of course. Well, since this is a fourth root, they have to escape in a group of four. But only one of them actually makes it out. So the fourth root of 16 is just two. So what about the cube root of 64? We can break down 64. Let's say that's 8 times 8. And that's going to be 2 times 4, 2 times 4, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. <laughs> okay, so we have the cube root of all of that. So we need to put them into groups of three because it's a cube root. Remember, only one in each group makes it out. So we end up with two twos, which when you multiply them, you get four. So the cube root of 64 is actually four. So what happens when you have the square root of a negative number? Can you get a negative number by squaring another number? So we know the square root of 36 is 6, but is negative 6 times negative 6 equal to a negative 36? It's not. It's equal to a positive 36. So there's nothing we could take the square root of if it's negative. We're going to actually see how to work this one on the next page. But what if there's a cube root of a negative? Is that possible? We broke down 27 up here. We know that's three threes, but I have a question. Is negative three times negative three times negative three equal to negative 27? Negative times negative is positive, and positive times negative is negative. So all of these could be in a group, and one of them makes it out. So the cube root of a negative 27 is negative three. The difference is this index is odd and this index is even. If you take the even root of a negative number, 
you're actually going to get an imaginary number. So let's see what that means. The set of complex numbers is the set of all numbers of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. So in this form, your a will be the real part of your complex number, and the i will be the imaginary part of the complex number. Okay. The ultimate imaginary number is the number i. Now I know you're saying that's a letter, <laughs> but have a look right here. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Mathematicians a long time ago figured out that we need something to define when you take the square root of a negative number. And that's when the imaginary numbers came into existence. So if you were to square this i, so we would square both sides of the equation, then the square root and the square cancel each other out. So you can see how i squared is equal to negative 1, right? Okay, so what exactly does that mean in when we work a problem? Well, if you're just adding two complex numbers, you'll only have to add the real parts and then add the imaginary parts. So this is a real part, this is a real part. What's negative 2 plus negative 4? That's negative 6. Well, this is imaginary and this is imaginary. So what's 3i plus a negative 9i? That would be a negative 6i. As long as you keep the real part and the imaginary part separate, you're all good. Well, of course you have to write it in that form we were talking about right here. A plus BI. So here's your A and here's your BI. So we're all good. Okay, so what about the next one? This time we're subtracting two complex numbers. So before you do anything, you need to distribute this negative. We'll end up with negative 2 plus 3I Negative times negative is positive. Negative times negative is positive. You do the same thing now. Add the real part. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Add the imaginary part. 3 plus 9 is 12. So what happens when you multiply them? You still do the same thing that we've always done. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. Negative 2 times negative 9i is positive 18i. 3i times negative 4 is negative 12i. And 3i times negative 9 is negative 27i squared. Okay, combine your like terms. We have 8. 18 minus 12 would be 6 minus 27, but what was i squared? i squared is negative 1, so this becomes times negative 1. So we have 8 plus 6i plus 27. Well, 8 and 27 are like terms. What is 8 plus 27? That will be 35. Remember, you want to keep your real part separate from your imaginary part, and the real part goes first. So we have 35 plus 6i.